Well, everyone, we have finally made it. We are here. The last film in the Blackwell Ghost series. I have watched seven films. That is seven hours of material that Turner Clay has put out. And like I said, I've really enjoyed my experience watching these movies. I think that they're entertaining and fun. If you're into the found footage mockumentary genre, I think that they're movies that you can get into. Despite their flaws, there's something about them that has this charm and this aesthetic that I keep coming back to. And I'm looking forward to talking about about the last film in the franchise today. The Blackwell Ghost 7 is directed by Turner Clay. A filmmaker attempts to continue his paranormal adventure but finds himself stalked and tormented by a dangerous person who follows his every move. This is the seventh installment of the Blackwell Ghost series. So, I jumped into this one, didn't know anything about it. I haven't really known anything about any of the other films. I told you guys in the last video, I really enjoyed the sixth film a lot. I really liked the personal connection into Turner's life. I think that, you know, with the loss of his wife and everything that's happened in that film, that it was a really personal movie that worked really well. In this movie, it abandons being at the house and kind of goes back into things with the Lightfoot house, but what is tied in this this time is there's no paranormal elements in this movie it is a psycho stalker who is coming after Turner for some reason or another and I really respected that a lot about this movie I liked that Turner was like here's a really drastic change up and I'm going to do something entirely different but unfortunately it doesn't work because he tries to tie it in to that old methodology of like things that go bump in the night but it's probably this time going to be a uh, just a person instead of a, an actual ghost and that really just made it very difficult to stay invested. I did like moments in this film. A lot of it is conversations with the police chief that he's talked to throughout um, most of the other movies that have existed in this franchise. And this one, just because of the fact that it's relying so heavily on this stalker element and this idea of like this crazy person who's become infatuated with his documentaries and wants to kind of like poke his head in and do things. And there's a kidnapping that's involved in this movie. And the problem is, is that the stakes never feel very high. I don't know if it's just the way that he films this and approaches it. Also, his filmmaking technique has changed a little bit to where it feels less a hundred percent of like a documentary style filming and like he's pulling back and trying to get more cinematic shots which sort of pulled me out of the way that the whole thing feels and that's unfortunate because I have to respect him as a filmmaker for being in the seventh film in this franchise and taking that big of a risk and saying like, okay, instead of doing more of the same, I'm going to do something that's affiliated, but try to do something that feels drastically different for the audience. And so I give him a lot of respect for going that direction, but the problem is just execution, right? If you, if you can't execute that premise in a way that keeps you engaged and keeps you wanting to watch more then it's not gonna work and unfortunately this one was really lackluster in that department because the paranormal element is non-existent in this film and the threat of a person is there you've got to keep the stakes going I think of something like creep the Patrick Bryce Mark Duplass film and obviously Mark Duplass character goes off the rails and he starts stalking Patrick Bryce's character the reason why that movie works so well is because of the way that his looming threat is always there even after Patrick Bryce's character leaves the cabin and goes back home the way that the threat continues to exist and continues to accelerate keeps you as an audience member wanting to view it keeps you engaged keep this keeps the suspense alive right and this one when you're jumping back and forth between so many different things and so many conversations and kind of pulling away from the stalker and talking about other elements with the Lightfoot case again, it just is really hard to stay cohesive throughout. And so because it pulled my attention that much, it's not one of my favorites in the franchise, but I still respect Turner for going that route and trying something different. And I know the end of this one said to be continued. It'll be interesting to see what happens when an eighth film is released in this series. I'm going to be really 
really curious as to what he manages to pull off. But I did enjoy watching the entirety of the Blackwell Ghost series. And I think it's cool to see independent filmmakers taking a risk and trying to do something on their own, especially if they love a medium and want to try to do things in that medium. I think that there's a lot of moments in this whole franchise that it feels very realistic and feels very grounded. And I appreciated that a lot. And yeah, I really, uh, I really enjoyed this series despite the fact that it had its flaws and I will watch the eighth film when it comes out. So have you seen The Blackwell Ghost 7? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was not great compared to the other ones. I feel like it fell short, but I still did enjoy watching the entirety of the franchise. As always, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.